Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will welcome Brian Hickox and Yoichi Udagawa from the Quincy Symphony Orchestra and talk about their first live performance coming up in over a year and a half. First, though, we check out weather and news for you. Currently in Quincy, we have a sun and clouds out there. It's a comfortable 73 degrees. We'll have partly sunny skies. Very comfortable today. Highs in the upper 70s. Open up the windows this evening. Humidity is gone. Clear skies. Lows tonight in the mid 50s. And it really looks like a gorgeous uh, late summer weekend coming up. Tomorrow is just perfect. Lots of sunny, dry weather. Temperatures hovering right around 80 degrees. Not bad on Sunday, a little warmer, a little more humid, but still nice with highs Sunday in the mid 80s. Maybe a shower around here on Monday with lots of clouds. Highs Monday in the mid 70s. Again, partly sunny, 73 degrees in Quincy right now. In the news today, several thousand people are expected to attend tomorrow's dedication ceremony of the new General's Bridge and Park in Quincy Center. The city will dedicate the bridge and the park to 18 generals with Quincy connections dating back to the Revolutionary War, several of whom are expected to attend the event. The Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says the date of the ceremony tomorrow was chosen on purpose. The 20th anniversary of that fateful day for New York and the Pentagon, uh, that terrible day, a tragic day for many, many lives that were lost, uh, and then began the war on terror. We are dedicating the General's Bridge in Quincy Center, the new bridge that you might have seen if you've driven down Bergen Parkway that's connecting Bergen into Quincy Center over the tracks. That bridge has been named for uh, 18 generals, actually. We're going to be honoring seven more modern-day generals that day which is the 11th at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's open to the public. It's going to be an absolutely terrific patriotic event. We're going to be celebrating old glory. We're going to be celebrating public service and military service. So certainly uh, all those veterans out there, hope you're able to join us. We're going to be hearing a little bit about the general stories. We'll be unveiling that beautiful statue area as part of the park. So hopefully you can join us. Tomorrow's ceremony starts at 10 a.m. It will include comments from Governor Baker, Congressman Stephen Lynch, and several of the generals who are being honored. A military flyover and some howitzers are expected to be part of the celebration, along with performances from the combined Quincy, North Quincy High School bands and the U.S. Navy Brass Quintet. The $10 million state-funded bridge connects the Bergen Parkway with Quincy Center over the MBTA tracks. The $25 million park was funded from the Quincy Center redevelopment projects. The park is completed. However, the bridge was delayed by the pandemic. It won't be open to traffic until later this fall. Quincy Public School students returned to the classroom this past week, many seeing their schools for the first time since the outbreak of the pandemic. Masks will be required indoors for staff and students aged five and older through at least October 1st to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Appearing on this program recently, Superintendent Kevin Mulvey and Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins said every effort is being made to keep everyone safe. They have last year, and they basically retrofitted and upgraded the entire HVAC system throughout the school uh, district. And then this summer, they have gone over it all again. Okay. And to make sure that our HVAC system is up and running and working at peak performance. Okay. And that's where we are right now, so we're ready for September. Um, we will be obviously following um, the, uh, uh, the protocol of opening the windows one or two inches to help with the ventilation yep. in all of the buildings. Yeah, there's an air exchange. I've learned so much about what we all have over the past uh, year. Air, air exchange, exchange rates. Yes, yep. and uh, MERV filters yeah. <laughs> and all of the MERV filters are at their maximum for every building. Right. Each ventilation system is different okay. in each building, but all the filters have been uh, replaced. Yep. They're at their maximum MERV rating. And um, again, Mr. Scott and his team did a great job in getting our schools ready to go for September. Pre-kindergarten and kindergarten students will return to the classroom in Quincy on Monday. Well, the Quincy Planning Board is reviewing a proposal for a large new development at the site of the former Ross Parking Garage in Quincy Center. Fox Rock Properties of Quincy is proposing a 20-story building with 200 market-rate apartments, 125 hotel rooms, and some retail space, plus a six-story building for medical offices 
and a seven story 490 space parking garage for the entire development. Quincy Planning Director Jim Fatsies says 20 story buildings for Quincy Center were approved by the City Council 12 years ago when Streetworks first proposed a redevelopment project that never happened. Pretty basically, this is the stuff that follows, uh, you know, what the plans have been. Uh, there were some people said, you know, why 20 stories? Well, it's, you know, first of all, the reason it wasn't 20 stories for, say, you know, Peter, uh, is, uh, Peter O'Connell, mm -hmm. is because he took a chance on the first 15-story building south of Boston. Uh, it's the tallest building south of Boston. So as we go forward, the, you know, the latest uh, presentation is the fifth time that we've actually had a certificate of consistency application in Quincy Center. Um, and, you know, the, uh, this is the first project that is speak, seeking uh, a special permit to build the 20-story uh, height limit. And, again, there's some folks that, you know, it's important for people to understand that um, you know, the, everybody should know that the certificate of consistency review process and the 20 story height limit in Quincy Center uh, was part of the um, uh, city's urban renewal plan straight along since 2009 when the uh, city council approved both the amendment one to the URDP and then, then the uh, Quincy Center donor, and again, obviously the, the Quincy Center zoning district amendment. Patsy says the 20-story building would be steel construction built by union labor. The medical building may house offices from several hospitals. The planning board has the final say on this proposal. They will meet again on the project November 10th. Interfaith Social Services of Quincy helped to make back to school a little bit easier for children and families in need by donating over 600 backpacks filled with school supplies to South Shore youngsters recently. Many businesses, organizations, and individuals contribute money, supplies, and backpacks during their annual back to school backpack drive. This year, major donors included Bank of Canton, Fox Rock Properties, Page Landscaping, the First Church of Squantum, volunteers from Blue Cross Blue Shields, IntelliCare, and Signet Electronics helped to fill those backpacks with notebooks, pens, pencils, and other back-to-school supplies. Coming up, Brian Hickox and Yuichi Utagawa of the Quincy Symphony Orchestra are here next. Welcome back. We're already laughing here in the studio because we've got the Quincy Symphony Orchestra president and conductor in studio, live and in person for the first time in over a year and a half. Brian Hickox, Yoichi Uragawa are here to talk about their 68th season that will kick off on September 18th at 5 p.m. on the Hancock Adams Common with a Pops concert with the Quincy Choral Society. So, hey guys, welcome back. It's great to be here. Good to it's see you, Joe. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to be live and in person yes. instead of Zoom. Isn't it though? Yeah, yes. it really is. It's great to have you both here. And it's, this is also not only the first live uh, appearance in studio for you, but also the first live performance for the symphony, Brian, right, since the pandemic began. Yes, our last was uh, in February of 2020. So wow. we do the math there and it's been over a year and a half. 19 months actually, yeah. I counted. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that like personally and professionally? For well, you there's no the doubt, symphony? you know, when we first looked at, um, we didn't know what was happening. Right. You know, we didn't know how long this would go on, how extreme it might be. Sometimes we, and I think as a, uh, as a community, we, we thought it might just be a passing thing, and then it became more serious, and then everything shut down. Yeah. And uh, certainly on the arts, you know, in the performing arts, and no audiences, trying to piece things together with the Zoom calls. We've been operating as the Quincy Symphony Orchestra. We just haven't had performances. There's been right. a lot that's been going on behind the scenes with regard to planning, mm -hmm. um, artists, guest artists for our upcoming season yep. and, uh, and the repertoire. And Yoichi and I have been working quite a bit on that. Yeah. 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 Did it change anything for the future of the symphony that you think is good, that you think will we'll continue post, you know, post-pandemic, post hopefully? Well, I think we had a, a period of time where uh, people were focusing on more important things than, uh, than something that was put on the back burner like a music performance. Mm. You know, we had parents who had to become teachers Mm -hmm. at home. 
And you know, to that end, their days were consumed with not only their day job, but with the job of entertaining the children, teaching the children. Uh, and so the, uh, the option of practicing went on a back burner. Yeah. Uh, to that end, the passion never died. Sure. Uh, however, there were only so many hours in a day. Yeah. And so uh, we've been encouraging our musicians, all the artists, to dust off their uh, their instruments yeah. now that we yeah. received you know some back to school orders and things of that sort. <laughs> That's an interesting point because people might forget the symphony is a volunteer symphony, yes. right? The, these are folks that are doing it out of the love of music, yourself included. Well, that's that's true. Yeah. You know, starting back in 1983, uh, when I first sat down uh, as a player in the orchestra, uh, it's it's been just a passion. Mm. Uh, it wasn't it was never about the money. Right. It was always about the the artistry, and uh, and then the relationship and especially the relationship that Yuichi and the orchestra has developed over the decades now. Yep, yep. So it's, uh, it's, it's, we, we see the passion from the musicians and I'm sure the audience sees the passion yeah. from Yuichi. Did you miss it? Uh, absolutely. You did. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I was one of those people that learned to dust it off quite a while ago. <laughs> and it, it's a long road back. <laughs> one never knows. Is that right? Oh, my goodness. It's not like riding a bike? It, it, well, yeah, the bike was there. It just <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> So it is, it's a craft. You have to <coughs> continually, you know, practice. I think we take that for granted yeah. when we're performing on a week-to-week -week or day-to-day -day basis. Right. Uh, it is just like, just like riding a bike. We get on and we do it yeah. and we tweak it and we look to have marginal levels of improvement. Mm -hmm. But with a long layoff, oh my goodness, right. it, uh, it brought me back to my elementary school years when I first picked up the instrument. No and I was almost to the point of calling an elementary music teacher saying, I need to get back to basics. I need a refresher. Can you, can you please help me? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, Yuichi, it's a different experience for you because this is your profession. It this is. This is your is. livelihood. It, yeah, no, it, it, yeah. It's, it's, I think for, for most performing artists, this was, uh, I mean, and, but, but for so many, so many others as well, uh, it, it's been a challenging time. Mm -hmm. But um, I personally uh, just tried to take advantage, I called it a sabbatical. Okay. Because you know? <laughs> that's, that's the only way to kind of handle something like this, right? Um, it's mar it's all yeah, the marketing, yeah, right? I, I, yeah, it's exactly, it's how you frame it. You know? <laughs> so, Whatever it takes to get through. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So I took the opportunity. Um, it's, it's interesting because one of the things I've, I think I've talked about before is that, you know, a conductor, you don't actually make any sound. It's the musicians who make the sound. Right, and right. they're doing really all the hard work yeah. and you get all the credit. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, <laughs> but um, I, I used to be, uh, before I became a conductor, I, I play violin and viola. Okay. And um, I, I think most conductors are, I mean, started out playing sure. some instrument. Yeah. And during the pandemic, I took advantage of it by uh, practicing a lot of violin. And uh, boy, I, I, you know, talk about just starting off from ground zero again, like the. <laughs> Mary had a little. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was, saying, I was saying to my poor cat, you know, and my poor wife, I'm going to go scratch for a while. Just close your ears. <laughs> okay. And I mean, just starting out with the basics again. Yeah. And um, it gave me, and, and I've been practicing a lot, which has been fun. Yeah. Um, okay. And I, I'm kind of curious. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting back into working regularly as a conductor because I think that this practice has done me some good. Really? Uh, g given me even more greater appreciation of what the players are doing. Sure. And, yeah. um, and as well as, uh, f you know, trying to figure out things, fixing things, going, oh, maybe I could, you know, use this kind of suggestion or um, keep that in mind when I'm conducting. Oh, okay. Um, All right. So, so uh, you walked in their shoes, essentially. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that's, uh, so I've tried to take, a, tried to take advantage sure. of this, uh, turn something negative into a positive. Yep, yep, and lemons into lemonade, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Will it uh, reflect on the performance on the 18th? Let's see, so it's Saturday, September 18th, 5 p.m., Hancock Adams Common. It's called a Pops concert. Yes. So and popular music? Yeah, well, it's, it's basically, um, yeah, popular music, okay. well-known classical pieces, okay. as well as selections from uh, patriotic things. And we're going to be working with our friends from the Quincy Choral Society. Yeah. 
And the city of Quincy and the mayor have been very generous to help put this together. And um, it, it should be a fun s musical celebration, upbeat celebration for the community. Yeah, it's going to be um, free, we should mention. Free, uh, and, and it's, it's outdoors. Right. Um, and it should be fun for the entire family. It's great. It really yeah. is. Is it different performing? I know you did uh, perform with the Choral Society during the Hancock Adams yes. Common Dedication, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So kind of similar to that? Yeah, very similar okay. to that. And uh, it's fun to uh, to work work with the Choral Society. I mean, they're a terrific group of people, wonderful singers, and uh, uh, they have a new conductor, so she'll be, so I'll be conducting part of the concert, mm -hmm. and Sarah Labrie will mm -hmm. be conducting the other, Kay. and uh, it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll, and, and I think the orchestra, too, enjoys collaborating with the singers as well as a different conductor every once in a while. Yeah. So. Will there be uh, separate performances? No, so we're going to just do one program, okay. and then some numbers the Quincy Symphony will do, some the, the chorus, soci chorus society will sing by themselves, yep. and, and, and many numbers that we'll do together. Okay. And uh, it'll be kind of back and forth. and. Should be a fun concert. Yeah, it's uh, uh, about an hour or so long. You said about an hour. Uh, yes. The city is providing um, a, a, a beer truck, if you will, so <laughs> some refreshments there. And like, but I think the poster said, "Don't bring your own." Do not right? bring your own Don't libations. Bring your own. No, we want you to <laughs> buy them there. Um, there'll be some seating. I know some kind of like uh, cafe tables. Are That's what I understand, so, right? Yeah. As well, and people can also sit on, you know, bring their own chairs. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, I think it'll be quite informal, but uh, should be fun for all. It sounds like it. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. it's going to be great just to get together and enjoy yes. some live music. Yes, yeah. and 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 just uh, celebrate getting through a, a very hard time. And 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 of course, it's you know, it's it's continues to be challenging. Well, right. Yeah. yeah. But it's we'll all get through it together, one way or another. Sure. <laughs> what is the symphony, Brian, doing with regards to COVID protocols, if you will? Well. Uh, uh, excellent point to share. Uh, we have a requirement within the symphony. Well, the great news is we're all vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Okay. So that's the protocols that we have within the orchestra ourselves. Okay. So um, full vaccination and we have attestation uh, requirements and okay. uh, if someone's not feeling well, they're welcome to stay home. Sure. They're, they're not welcome to, uh, to participate. <laughs> yes. uh, additionally, we will be wearing masks. Uh, the string players for the entirety and the um, the wind players will only remove them while they're playing. Okay. And we've done right. some research yes. into uh, you know the uh, the spreading of any wind and we've, we're the distances that we are setting up the space distances are such that it's safe even if we didn't have these other protocols. Yeah. However, we're still maintaining okay. those. Okay. Interesting. And we are asking our patrons, uh, our our audiences. Uh, to respect uh, other people's health by bringing masks to the performances as well. Okay, all right. Um, that's for an outdoor show. What happens when you start? No, no, that's for the indoor season. Okay, that's for the indoor season. season. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so for the uh, the indoor season, we'll we'll ask people to wear masks at the audience. Okay. Is there a full season planned this year? We sure do. Yes, yes we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> We've been busy, even oh. though we haven't been performing. <laughs> okay. All right. Do there's tell. a lot. Of, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Yeah. Uh, for instance, we uh, have to engage soloists to come play with the orchestra. Sure. And um, so, reaching out to those people, ma uh, making sure that their schedules, uh, their busy people, match with ours. It's, and w and in one instance this year, we had to change the whole uh, schedule for the orchestra by a week so that we could fit this soloist to come. Oh, okay. And uh, I mean, we're thrilled to be able to do that. This is some, sometimes you can't do that, but right. uh, it, it worked out for, for all of us. So um, all that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. planning the pieces, uh, and then and also planning for contingency things. Because uh, um, when we first started planning er earlier this summer, particularly for this coming year, yeah. uh, there were no, no. Uh, we all thought at the beginning of the summer, right, that there wasn't going to be any problems. Uh, oh, right. That COVID was really kind of going away. Sure. And now, of course, with the rise of the Delta variant, yeah. there's, there's, uh, there's some uncertainty. So we, we have yeah. to kind of plan for all of that. Yeah. And we, we, were, we were talking about it, the fact that, um, boy, in music school, we didn't learn anything about <laughs> vaccination requirements <laughs> <laughs> and mask wearing. Nobody did. Nobody <laughs> and, did. and really, yeah. it, it, it adds a whole level of complexity mm. 
to the planning, right? Well, uh, it's yeah. interesting mm -hmm. when you say that because in music school it was about the music itself, mm -hmm. not the uh, business behind it, so to sure. speak. Yeah. And um, you know, Yoichi is our our um, the head of our artistic side, and I'm the head of the business side, yep. so to speak. Yep. Uh, yet the liaison between the two of us, the necessity of it because of COVID. Uh, you know, we've we've gotten into yeah. too many logistical discussions as opposed to artistic <laughs> discussions. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And. It's had a financial impact, I'm sure, too, Brian. Well, there's no doubt. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's been challenging. Um, we've been very fortunate that um, the city has helped us with grants. And uh, we thank the mayor's office very much for, uh, for informing us about the availability of some of those grants because we had no patrons making contributions exactly. and yeah. uh, no performances for which we might have been paid right. and uh, other things of that sort. Um, I do want to bring up mm -hmm. a, a sad but a heartwarming brief, brief discussion. Sure. Um, I received a, a kind note from a gentleman whose aunt had passed almost a year ago to the day today. Wow. Uh, she was a lifelong resident of, uh, of Quincy and she had passed, it was September 19th, 2020. Okay. Uh, she, uh, Margaret Doyle is her name and he referred to her as Aunt Peggy. Okay. And uh, he had indicated that in her will, she had remembered the Quincy Symphony Orchestra really? as a lifelong resident of Quincy. Uh, she also participated in, uh, uh, at the uh, Thomas Crane Library in the children's room, mm -hmm. volunteering there for many years. And so uh, uh, it, was, it was so heartwarming to have the discussion about the memories with her nephew uh, about Aunt Peggy and, and her generous uh, thoughts of including us uh, in her will and her wishes. Nice. And so, um, yeah. so thank you to uh, Bill, her nephew, and uh, the stories that I heard about Aunt Peggy. It's always, I'm sure, helpful to hear how what you do as a musician, you know, as a as a leader of the orchestra, impacts people's personal lives because it, it it really kind of propels you forward and gives you a meaning. Well, and and her impact uh, in in uh, being a benefactor to the orchestra uh, will help many of the children's programs that we have moving forward as that was one focus that she asked to have. That's great. Of, yeah. of so her legacy lives on. Absolutely. That, yeah. And uh, and we're, we've just started this year to enhance the legacy for um, Quincy residents if they choose to participate in naming individual chairs of the orchestra performers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we see that in many uh, orchestras including Boston oh, Symphony, etc. Yes. Yeah. And so that can be a lifelong legacy for them and they can reach out to me uh, if they'd uh, be interested in participating in that for themselves, their family, or in memory or honor of someone. Okay, good uh, to know. My email address is president at quincysymphonyorchestra.org. Okay, we have the main email address yeah. for the symphony up there, That's the phone right. number as well, and then the main website. So even through these tough times, uh, you know, we've had support mm -hmm. and we're so grateful. And uh, uh, again, to the, uh, the city, the mayor's office, and to Aunt Peggy and her family. Great. Yoichi, speaking of mm -hmm. um, dedications, I know that this, this concert on the 18th, there will be um, a special mention of a friend to the symphony, right? Yes, Rich yeah. Keneally, who was uh, the, the band director at both Quincy High School and uh, North Quincy High School. He was really uh, a wonderful friend to the Quincy Symphony, a dedicated teacher. Both he and his wife passed away. Uh, because of COVID, mm -hmm. and we're, we're, we're going to do one short piece in their memory because uh, Rich, he was just so generous to us and always positive, uh, wonderful person. And uh, it, we, 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 need, we need to remember that uh, th this, this pandemic ha has had a real cost. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, um, and it's, yeah. you know, right here at home, too. Right, uh, right. So. Uh, and I remember him, I mean, he was he was always such a positive spirit, and uh, we, we used his facilities to rehearse, and he'd do everything to make us feel welcome and uh, help us set up or whatever it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's, we're, we're tr tremendously grateful to him. Curious yeah. if any of, any of his students that come up through the band program are involved with the symphony that you're aware of? I don't think currently okay. we do, but uh, it's amazing how many people do come back yes. through the years. Yes. And, and actually one of the solos that we're going to have, uh, the, the same one that we changed the date for, yeah. um, 
he he played as a child prodigy with the Quincy Symphony like 50 years ago or something really? like that. Yes. And now he's with the Boston Symphony. Yeah, he oh. plays with the Boston Symphony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure if I should give it away. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, I mean, he's a, an incredible violinist. Must be, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're looking forward to, ha to having him come back, right? Yeah. And it's nice he remembers his roots. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when you got famous, don't forget where yeah, you yeah, came yeah. from. <laughs> um, I think folks are just going to be excited to get back to live music, both members of the symphony and the public uh, that's been mis missing you over a year and a half um, as well to come and see you perform live. Uh, get it as uh, Saturday, September 18th, 5 p.m. on the Hancock Adams Common, right in front of the Church of Presidents. Yes. Uh, seating provided, bring your own blanket or lawn chair and enjoy libation yeah. at the event. <laughs> yes, don't bring your own, but bring, your, bring yourself. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and then going forward for the rest of the year, Yuichi? Uh, well, uh, we're going to have a concert in November. Okay. Uh, and and we, we were supposed to do a celebration of Beethoven uh, last year because it was, uh, 2020 was 250 years okay. uh, since he was born. And, uh, well, we missed that, so we're going to do that 250th celebration this year. Okay. We, we thought that was okay uh, because we missed his birthday 250 <laughs> years ago. <so. laughs> he wouldn't mind. <laughs> he wouldn't mind. Okay. <laughs> Quincy Symphony didn't exist 250 right. years yeah, ago. So, yeah, um, okay. And then we have this violinist coming, uh, and we'll be doing Tis the Season with the schools. Okay. We had some meetings with them. Excellent. And, um, with some of their students, <coughs> we're working out. We're still working out the details on that. Okay, all right. So keep and an then, eye on your website. Yeah, and we're hoping to have a, a family concert, a youth ca family concert, and then a concerto youth winner. The the person, the young person who won the year that I mean, in 2020, yep. he was supposed to perform with us in May. Uh, well, his con concert was canceled, so we're hoping to have him. Okay. Uh, play with this in Kind of like doing a redo of 2020. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, great to see you. Really appreciate your time. Well, thank, thank you. Joe. Thank you very much, Joe. Well, Pleasure to see you live yeah. and in person. Yeah, exactly. In person. Yes. <laughs> with pants on. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hopefully, uh, the weather on the 18th will be the same as it is at today and over this yes, weekend. Yes, yeah, hopefully. The rest of the day today, lots of sunshine, uh, upper 70s, picture perfect tomorrow as well. A little warmer here on uh, Sunday, maybe a shower on Monday, which is perfect for a Monday. Thanks again to Brian Hickox and Yuichi Urugawa for joining us. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. We are back next Friday with the new leaders of the Quincy Salvation Army on another edition of Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then.